Hello and welcome. You are about to see an example of the restorative conferencing process conducted in a virtual or video conference format. This is Rashid, a community restorative justice practitioner. He recently received a referral from a school he works with that implements restorative practices. He's about to begin the restorative conferencing process to show you what it looks like. First is what we call the preparation phase, and it is crucial. Rashid will thoroughly review the referral documents. The complainant is Jean Baines. Her daughter, Patricia Baines, is 17 years old and a high school junior. The respondent is Carrie Brown, a 16-year-old junior at the same school. The referral indicates that Jean Baines called her daughter's school on a weekday afternoon recently. Ms. Baines told the vice principal that she had been home when she heard breaking glass. She looked out her window and saw the respondent, Carrie Brown, standing near her car before she ran away. Ms. Baines went outside and discovered one of the passenger side windows of her car had been shattered. No items were noticed to have been stolen from the car and no other property damage was evident. The referral also shows that when the school spoke with Carrie and her father, Ahmad Brown, Carrie admitted to have broken the window. The school suggested that this incident be referred to a restorative conference. The first thing Rashid did as part of his prep process was to get in touch with the vice principal who sent him the referral. Rashid wants to know what has already been done related to the situation. He needs more information, including the best times and way to contact the complainant and respondent and whether the parties were aware that the situation had been referred to the restorative conference. Rashid scheduled separate interviews with the complainant and respondent prior to the actual conference. He wants to get to know everyone involved in the situation and let them get to know him as the facilitator. He is about to get on a video call with the complainant Gene Baines. Preparation is hands down one of the most important parts of the restorative conferencing process. For every restorative conference, it is crucial to engage in thorough and conscientious prep with these goals in mind. Build rapport and trust in you as a facilitator. Familiarize participants with the process and their roles. Get informed commitment to participate. Give participants a chance to reflect on and practice expressing what they want to share. Identify other needed participants, red flags, and scheduling availability. Assess differences in capacity that may get in the way of meaningful participation. And clarify any confusion. Rashid will start with simple introductions. Hello, my name is Rashid. Thanks for talking with me today. I'm with an organization that helps youth solve problems on their own instead of being sent to court. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right, thank you. Thank you for being willing to sit down with me today. We're here to talk about a meeting to resolve the situation that resulted in your car window being broken. We call that the harm. Next, Rashid will explain the restorative conferencing process. The meeting I am inviting you to is called a restorative conference. It is a meeting of those involved in and affected by the harm. We come together, get to know each other better, and talk about what happened, how everyone has been affected, and how to make things better. Ideally, a conference ends in an agreement about how to move forward. It is important for you to know that I will not tell anyone what you tell me today. I will only share information if you say it's OK or if sharing the information could prevent someone else from getting hurt. Do you have any questions? This part is really important. We are creating safe spaces 
and you should not share anything outside of a prep interview or restorative circle without consent. After answering any questions, Rashid will ask Jean and Patricia for an informed commitment to participate in the process. Are you on board to be a part of the restorative conference to resolve the issue with Carrie? Yes, very much so. Now, Rashid is ready to get into the meat of the interview, asking restorative questions. And it helps to start with larger questions like, what happened? Who has been affected by the harm and how? How can we move forward? And in between, use more probing questions to get participants to elaborate on shorter or more surface level responses. Always listen with empathy and curiosity. Acknowledge participants' experiences. Okay, so now I'd like to hear about the situation. Tell me about what happened. Well, it was a, a weekday and uh, I, I was asleep on the, on the sofa in the, in the early afternoon, actually. I work nights at the hospital and I, I heard the sound of glass shattering and I looked out my window and I saw Carrie, a girl from my daughter's school standing next to my car just before she ran off down the street. I went outside and I found the passenger side of my window smashed in. I called the school to complain and report the incident. She should have been in class, not running around the streets. Did you know Carrie before this? A little bit. She and Patricia, my daughter, used to play together sometimes back in middle school. We live in the same neighborhood about half a mile apart. So what were you thinking or feeling at the time? <sighs> I was mad. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm livid. I, I drive 45 minutes each way to and from work every day. That's a long way without a window. <laughs> and I don't know why this girl came to my house and did that. When Patricia found out, it definitely rattled her a bit. She's, she's scared to leave the house now. I can see how this situation could make you both feel really unsafe. So tell me, who all has been affected by this and how? I guessed just me and Patricia. Uh, it, it's, it's just us together. I'm a single mom and she's, she's my only daughter. What do you feel is the most important thing for Carrie to understand about this situation? My daughter shouldn't have to be looking over her shoulder while minding her own business at home in her own neighborhood or at school. And if I still got to repair that window and knowing that when it's right around the corner, <laughs> I don't have the money right now to even fix that. I see. So there's the emotional and physical safety component to this. And then there's the issue of the broken window and getting it fixed. Am I getting that right? Anything else? That's the main bit. Look. I called the school instead of the police because I don't want to get them involved unless, you know, I have to. Carrie's got some problems, sure. She's young and I don't want her getting stuck in the system. I understand that. Now, we've already touched on my next question a little bit, but I wanna ask how you think we can move forward. What would you like to see as an outcome of this conference? Well, first, I'd like Carrie to stay away from my daughter, period, and, 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 and my house. I think it's best if there's just time to let everything cool down and, and, and keep it that way. OK. Anything else? I wanted to pay for my window. OK. Got it. Is there anyone you would like to join you 
at the conference or anyone else you think should participate in the restorative conference? I think it would be good if my daughter is there. Um, it, it, it might help her get some closure because I, I don't know what's going on. Okay, so you'd like your daughter to come. Would you mind if I set up a separate interview with her prior to the conference? So what I'd like to do is make sure that everyone is fully prepared before we all come together and get the conference going. Sure. Okay, so what do you think is the best time and, and like how can I reach her? What's the best method to reach her? I'm not sure of her schedule, Mr. Rashid, but it's easier to reach her by text, you know. Um, I'll give you her number and, and ask her, you know, to be on a lookout for your message. Okay, perfect. That'll work. Now, when we go into the restorative conference, I'll be asking similar kinds of questions, you know, like I asked you today. So let's, let's just talk about what you feel comfortable sharing in the conference yourself. Whether there's anything you'd like me to share for you, anything that's particularly off limits. Let's talk about that briefly. Continuing his prep, Rashid is getting ready to interview the respondent, Carrie Brown. Prior to this call, Rashid spoke to Carrie's father, Ahmad Brown, to get permission to contact Carrie for the interview and engage in the restorative process. Rashid will conduct the interview with Carrie without her father present. This will help preserve confidentiality. Often, young people are hesitant to disclose information with a family member present. A one-on-one -on -one confidential interview will allow Carrie to say things she might not if her father were present and make her feel safe enough to share a level of detail that Rashid might not get otherwise. Prior to his video call with Carrie, Rashid reviews his preparation interview goals. Again, after introductions, Rashid will explain restorative conferencing to the respondent and get informed commitment to participate. Hello, my name is Rashid. Thanks for joining. I'm with an organization that works with your school to help students and community members solve problems on their own instead of involving the court system. How are you doing today, Carrie? I'm all right. I wish I didn't have to be here. I understand that, but I'm glad that you're here. As you know, we're here to talk about Jean Bain's car window being broken recently. That's what we will call the harm in this situation. I want to explain the process so you feel prepared for a meeting coming up that is called a restorative conference. It is a meeting of those involved in and affected by the harm. We come together, get to know each other better and talk about what happened, how everyone has been affected and how to make things better. Usually a conference ends in an agreement about how to move forward. Do you have any questions? What if I don't wanna do this conference? What if I think this is some BS? That's a good question. This process is an alternative to police involvement. It's a chance for you to be directly involved in deciding how to make amends. Are you on board to be a part of the restorative conference to resolve the situation? I mean, I don't want the cops involved. I think this will help. It's, it's, it's complicated. It is complicated and I want you to know that in this process, we will all sit down together as equals. You will get a chance to be heard and understood and have a say in what happens. Does that sound reasonable for you now? Rashid is careful to leave some silent space for Carrie to think and decide whether to continue or ask any more questions. I mean, all right, I'll give it a try. Thank you. Now, before we go any further, it is important that you know that I will only share information if you say it's okay, or if sharing the information could prevent someone else from getting hurt. 
Okay. Okay. All right, so let's continue. It's important for me to understand the situation from all sides so I can help facilitate an agreement that feels fair to everyone. I'm gonna ask a series of questions. So let's kind of get going. Can you tell me about what happened the day the window was broken? I broke the cloud window. I shouldn't have did it. It was stupid. Okay, well, let's explore a little more. What were you thinking or feeling when you broke the window? I was mad, really, really mad. Okay, mad about what? I got anger issues. I've been working with my social worker, Mr. Carter. So just before you broke Miss Bain's window, you were really mad? Mm-hmm. Were you mad at Miss Baines? Nope. Someone else? Yep. Her daughter, Patrice, we go to school together. Oh, I see, y'all go to school together. Why were you mad at Patricia? Well, Patricia and I have known each other since we was kids. We were, we were neighbors. She been, I don't know how to explain it. She tried to start drama with me. I tried to stay away from her, but sometimes it just makes me really mad. One time in middle school, she told me, told all the girls in PE I had life. And then she tried to kiss my boyfriend. So before you broke the window, were you just generally mad at Patricia or did something specific happen between you two? Oh, something happened. Everyone at the school knows about it. Do you feel comfortable sharing a little bit? I'd like to hear about what happened. Patricia and I are in history class together. The day before the window, I had delivered my oral report in class. I was really nervous. I wanted to throw up. I get really nervous from in front of groups and big crowds. Like, I almost skipped class. I was so scared, but I didn't. I gave, I gave my all. But when I got up there to do my report, I kind of froze and stuttered so much I couldn't get it through. Patricia recorded me the whole time on her phone. She edited it, made me look bad. She posted it all over social media. It went viral at school. Everyone was commenting and sharing it. Everyone was making fun of me. They still are, and I'm sorry. Okay, I'm so sorry that it happened to you. Thank you for sharing that. We need to look beyond just the harm that started this process. So in this case, the broken window so that we can look at the larger picture of what actually led up to that moment. This process is about working to heal all the harms that happened. Are you comfortable sharing about the social media video in the conference? I guess so. Okay, thank you. Now, you said that Patricia posted the video the day before you broke the window. Can you tell me more about what you were thinking or feeling the day you went over there to Miss Bain's house? Like I said, I was really mad. When our class was about to start, I went over to her house. I didn't know what I was gonna do. I thought about finding somewhere to hide and waiting for her to come outside to jump her or something. But something inside told me that wasn't a, that was a bad idea. I was gonna go back home, but I was just so mad. I picked up the rock, broke the window. It was so loud and everything kind of stopped for a while. And I wasn't angry anymore. I was just, I don't know, I left. That's a lot of emotion, a lot happened there. What do you think or feel about it now? Sorry, I feel stupid and sorry. I wish I didn't did it. I just didn't know what else to do. I, I wasn't thinking. So, you know, what made it difficult to, to make a different decision or do something uh, differently in that moment? You said you wish you hadn't broken the window. So like trying to just figure out like, what do you think you could have done differently? What else could you have done? 
told my dad, the vice principal, or Mr. Carter, I guess, ask for help. Okay. So why was it hard to tell one of these people and ask for help? Uh, I was embarrassed and scared. I know you talked to Mr. Carter. He helps a lot, but I haven't seen him for a while. I missed some of our sessions recently, and I thought he would be mad. Or I might was in some type of trouble or something. You can see some of the vital information that surfaced during these prep interviews. Rashid has a clearer picture of the whole event and the perspectives of the parties involved that he wouldn't have just from reading the referral documentation. In this interview, he'll continue to ask restorative questions about how the participants can move forward. He'll get consent from Carrie about what she wants to share during the restorative conference. And then he'll see if there's anyone else that Carrie would like to have participate in the conference. As we're about to wrap up here, are there any people you think we should invite to this conference to help resolve this? I don't know. Anyone you'd like to invite for support? I can't think of anyone. Well, I thought I heard you mention you were working with Mr. Carter, the school social worker. Is that right? Yes. Do you like working with him? Yeah, I guess. He's nice. He tries to help doesn't judge me and he's funny would you like for him to participate in your conference if he can't make it i guess he's really busy mr carter and i already know each other through the school may i check with him after we're done talking today i think he'd like to be there if he could yes please all right well, let's talk about scheduling the conference and some next steps. Rashid asked Carrie for permission to approach Mr. Carter, the school social worker, about joining the conference. So Rashid set up a preparatory interview with him. Rashid wants to know as much about the situation and participants as possible. And prep is his time to do it. He knows that proper prep will help him lead the restorative conference to a successful conclusion. Mr. Carter, good to see you again. How are you doing? Chief, it's always good to see you. I'm hanging in there. How are you doing? I've been all right. Man, I've been working really hard on my prep for this restorative conference with Carrie Brown and Miss Baines. Oh, yeah, the broken window situation. I heard about it. I'm glad they ended up uh, giving you the referral. Carrie's a good student, but she's going through some stuff right now. We were working on it together. Yeah, that's what Carrie said. But you know, she asked if you would be interested in participating in her restorative conference. Of course. I'd love to be there. Just send me the time and other info, uh, and I'll make sure it's on my calendar. I was expecting to be, I was expecting to be there anyway. Dr. Wesley, you know, the vice principal, uh, mentioned an upcoming conference to me yesterday and asked if I could take over as a school rep uh, for the session. Okay, that's great. That works. What else can I help you with? It looks like I'm on a roll. Do you have time for me to ask you a few more questions to help me wrap up my prep process? Of course, ask away. Rashid will ask questions to learn about Mr. Carter's level of involvement with Carrie and how he can support her. He'll also want to know more about the relationship between Carrie and Patricia Baines the complainant's daughter. Rashid will also see if Mr. Carter can participate in possible check-ins after the conference concludes.